Hi, everyone, and welcome to The Business Takeaway, a video cast series where we interview various professionals in the advertising, marketing, and public relations industry. I'm the CEO, founder, and your host for today, Aditi Gunda. With me today, I have Tamina Stoll, who is a client solutions manager at a well known social media platform and the founder and host of the Fem Hive podcast. It's great to be talking with you, Tamina. Thank you so much for having me, Aditi. I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. Of course. I'd like to start off by first asking you, what got you interested in this field? Yeah, very good question. So um, let me take a step back there. So growing up, I actually thought that I was going to go into journalism. My dad is a journalist and, you know, I always enjoyed like writing and, you know, communication. And I actually started out as a radio reporter back in, in, in Munich where, where I'm from. And then even throughout the first like two, three years um, of my college career, I took a lot of journalism classes. However, at some point I got exposed to um, the innovation entrepreneurship program at, at my alma mater at Duke University and that kind of changed everything for me. Um, got exposure to you know the world of tech, startups and all of that. And around the same time I started being more interested in the world of social media, started you know doing like internships and part-time jobs in, in social media management and um, yeah, it kind of like got me hooked. And now I work at a social media platform within their um, digital advertising space. So um, yeah, I don't know, like it was a bit of a 180, you know, from journalism to then going to more of the business side, but uh, it still all has to do with communication. So in that sense, like um, I remained loyal to that profession. <laughs> For sure. I started off wanting to be a journalism major and then I saw this aspect like advertising and public relations. So that I totally agree with you for that. So what was your education where you went to college, bachelor's degree and master's degree if applicable? Yeah, so um, I actually started my college career back in Germany where I'm from originally at Ludwig Maximilian University, studied there for two years majored in political science and minored in communication science. And then I spent one study abroad year at Duke University in Durham, North Carolina. I loved it so much. I didn't want to leave and applied for transfer admission, got accepted. And then I finished my bachelor's degree at Duke where I graduated in 2017 with um, a major in political science. And then at Duke, we have these um, certificate programs, which is like less than a major, but more than a minor. So I did a certificate in policy journalism and media studies and innovation and entrepreneurship. So exciting. Um, I noticed that on your LinkedIn page, you earned licenses and certifications. So could you tell us how did you benefit from those? And did earning those make you stand out from other people? Um. I mean, to be honest, in my profession, like there are no required certifications, but I'm someone who definitely has a growth mindset. So I just love taking online courses and certificate programs in, in general. So whenever I find something that piques my curiosity, I will just like go for it. And then on LinkedIn, you have the opportunity to add it to your LinkedIn profile. And I do think, especially when you're younger uh, and on the job hunt, it definitely it's a nice thing to have to show to recruiters and to hiring managers that, you know, you're proactively uh, trying to educate yourself and have a growth mindset. So um, would definitely, definitely recommend it to younger folks for sure. Uh, what has your career path been since college? You can kind of just skim through the jobs right out of college because I know you graduated a while ago and just yeah. go in more depth on like recent experiences. Yeah, for sure. So um I did right out of college. I did like just like a one year long digital communications and marketing fellowship at Duke. Um, so stayed in Durham for a year. Uh, and then I joined actually my current company right away through a rotational program, which I highly recommend if, you know, any of your listeners are considering that it's a great way to learn about different parts of the business, gain exposure to like leadership, expanding your network across different segments of, of, of a business. So I highly recommend that. Um, that rotational pro program had a sales focus. So afterwards I transitioned into sales development, which I did for about a year and two months. And then 
I joined um, the paid advertising space within my company as an account director, which I did for a year and a half. And um, at the beginning of 2022, I uh, moved from Dublin, Ireland to New York um, to join a different team within my, my organization as a client solutions manager and what my day-to-day -day looks like is that I support one big client in the telecommunication space um, with their digital marketing campaigns and their overall strategy on our platform. That's great. Thank you so much for letting me know like what you do uh, for your day-to-day -day tasks. That's really going to help my followers too. So what did college not prepare you for when you entered the field? <laughs> uh I mean, don't get me wrong, I love my college experience. I'm a huge, huge, you know, Duke fan and proud Duke alumna. Um, really, really miss my time on campus. But I wouldn't say that, you know, my classes necessarily prepared me for my profession or for being a functional adult, um, for, for that matter. Um, I just wish there had been something like an adulting, 101 class in in college that would have told me things like oh how, like how to set up a retirement fund how to invest in stocks like how to find mentors how to network how to take care of your mental health and all of that stuff so that's actually what i'm focusing on with with my podcast fem hive but as for my profession i think I did get some exposure through, you know, internships in my part-time jobs on campus through social media, but that was mostly within the organic space. So that's why I was also eager to enter, you know, the paid social space because I'd never gotten any exposure to that. And it's really difficult to get exposure in college unless you're doing, you know, closely related internships. I think a lot of it is just like learning by doing on, on the job, but also, you know, gaining knowledge through, you know, any of the certification programs, taking online courses, and also having informational interviews with people in the field that definitely helped me a lot. Awesome. So going based off of that, you answered a lot of this question. So what else would you encourage early in career professionals to do to land a job like yours? Yeah, um, definitely like networking is, is key. And don't be afraid. You know, I know exactly what you feel like, you know, trying to to land an internship for the summer or trying to find your, you know, first full-time gig out of college. I know exactly what that feels. And I've come to experience personally that people, most people at least, are definitely willing to pay it forward because first of all, nobody can thrive in isolation. And second of all, we, you know, people who are a bit further, you know, in our careers and even more so more senior people who might seem like very intimidating, like we were once college kids who were trying to, you know, get to where we are today, right? And we had sponsors, mentors, people who who would guide us along the way. So I definitely recommend, like, even if there's someone, if you're like, oh my God, this person is like, I don't know, like a senior executive at, at this company, they will never reply. Like, just give it a shot, especially if you have some sort of a commonality. Like I always recommend leveraging your college's alumni network. Like I would never say no to talking to a Duke student who's reaching out to me. In fact, I am like actively like mentoring Duke students and recent um, Duke graduates. So definitely take advantage of that with your own alumni network. Um, because yeah, at the end of the day, we want to pay it forward. And also don't forget people love talking about themselves. <laughs> right. Thank you. I know how many people stress how networking is so important in this field. So how exactly do you think we should reach out to like other people? Like how should we network in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, kind of depends on the tools and resources you have access to. If you have, you know, an internal like alumni database where you can access emails, that would definitely always be my 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 first priority. But obviously, there's also pages like or like websites like LinkedIn where you can search for people, even like filter by university, so you can identify uh, fellow alumni and reach out to them. Like, look at their profiles, like find those commonalities and then reach out and be like, hey, um, 
I'm a DT and I'm really interested in learning more about your time at company XY in your role XY because I'm really interested in pursuing a career in this field. I saw that you recently posted this on LinkedIn or I recently saw this or read this article that you read and it really piqued my curiosity, blah, 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 blah. I think it always helps when you show that you've done your homework and reference something on, you know, their profile or something that you read about them, you know, something, something like that. And um, then just like ask if they have like 20, 30 minutes to chat over Zoom or on the phone sometime over the next couple of weeks. Um, Cause like the worst thing that can happen is, is they say no, right? But if you don't even try, it's automatically already a no. So you can, you can only win in that scenario. Right, those are some great points you bring up. Thank you. Um, what hard skills would you say are essential to your position? Oof. So I think because my position is technically a sales position, like I think soft skills are probably more important than hard skills, you know, like having people skills, communication skills, emotional intelligence. But I do think that it is important to have some basic industry knowledge as in like understand how digital marketing and specifically paid advertising works, you know, there's like lots of like acronyms and like jargon, like, you know, what is a CTR, like a click through rate or cost per click, um, cost per lead, you know, number of impressions, ad frequency, like all of that stuff, something that I had to learn myself when I entered this field. It's not super complex. Um, but it is something that, you know, especially when you're talking to clients or when you're talking to agencies, which I do on a daily basis, you know, those are like the kind of things you do need to know. And in addition to that, I definitely recommend that you just stay on top of industry um, news, you know, like subscribe to newsletters, um, listen to podcasts, like follow people online that are in that space, just to make sure you, you're aware of, of, of trends. Thank you. Uh, did you learn anything from other people's mistakes? And if so, what did you learn? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, hmm, trying to think. No worries. I feel like I tend to focus on learning from my own mistakes as opposed to looking at other people. Um, just because I feel like that leads to accelerated growth if that makes sense like for me um being more patient and like living in the present i know this doesn't necessarily like have something to do with my profession um but it has definitely helped me tremendously personally and professionally because i've come to realize that you know when you're constantly obsessed with the future and you stop enjoying you know being in the present living in the moment you lose track of time very easily and you stop also being grateful for the things that you've already achieved so uh, as someone who's just like incredibly ambitious and who set outrageously ambitious goals for herself in life and i'm not saying that i'm going to stop doing that i definitely still do but pausing here and there definitely helps don't panic if something doesn't work out the way you had initially pictured it. Like I've come to realize that a lot of the goals I set for myself initially that didn't work out or worked out in a different way than I'd initially planned for or anticipated, it ended up being a silver lining. So be, be patient first and foremost with yourself and also like show yourself some grace. I understand that. I love that answer. Um, <laughs> how did you progress from a lower position to a higher position? Um, that's the great thing about working in tech specifically. Uh, you get promoted fairly quickly. Like I, when I think back about my own trajectory, so I started working at my current company pretty much exactly three and a half years ago. And I've this is the fourth position I've I've had since then. And I've managed to I think 3x my salary in within that time um, as well. Um, so that's definitely something, you know, in case people are interested in, in the tech sales space, um, 
that's just how it goes. Like obviously the career progresses a lot faster in the beginning when you're still junior. Um, and then once you've reached kind of like mid senior level, then like it takes a little bit longer, but, but still, especially in tech, things move very, very quickly. Um, so if you um, obviously achieve your goals, reach your KPIs and, and, and all of that, the things that you, you know, agreed on, especially like in, in sales, um, we care a lot about numbers and you'll, you usually only get promoted when like you hit or, you know, when you, when you are able to, to achieve your, your KPIs. Um, so that's very important. But at my company, for example, they also care about, you know, leadership skills, for example, th like being involved in things outside of your core role. So I always recommend um, that people also work on their personal brands by getting involved in things outside of their core roles. For me specifically, I'm very passionate about gender equality and ad advocacy and diversity, inclusion, and belonging. So I got involved with our women at group at my company and led it in the Dublin office for, for a year that allowed me to gain more exposure, build my brand gain leadership skills. And that also helped uh, immensely with my uh, performance reviews where it's received like exceeded expectation reviews and won a few regional awards. So obviously all of that really helps when you're trying to make a case for a promotion or for a, uh, a race. It's great to hear. So the next few questions are more industry based. So the first question is, what current issues or trends in the field should people know about slash be aware of? Very good question. I think the whole creator economy is what's very much top of mind right now for everyone in this industry. Obviously, we see with all the different platforms and most recently, obviously, with like TikTok, for example, that um, that there is a lot of opportunity for creators to focus on very like niche topics and and generate like legitimate and genuine interest um and there's obviously also more and more brands who are trying to collaborate with these creators um to you know get their brand messages and their brands in front of their desired target audiences um, that's something that, you know, we're trying to solve for right now as well at, at my company. So that's definitely a space I would watch because we're just getting started. You know, there's still way more content consumers than content creators. Um, I know recently I, I listened to a podcast where there are some projections about how big the creator economy is going to be in like five or 10 years from now. And it's like a trillion dollar industry or the potential is at least there for it to become a trillion dollar um, industry so definitely watch that space um yeah that's great um how can you use social media to reach and impress traditional media i think what i love about social media is again the fact that there which is a can be a good and a bad thing um but it removes kind of like the gatekeepers as in like former traditional media, right? Like someone like you and I, you know, we both have podcasts. We can just go out and share our thoughts with the world, right? And, and I think that's really awesome. Like having a creative outlet, like being able to reach out to people, you know, across the globe and interview them, you know, and ask them these questions. I think that's, that's fabulous. And it allows people to, to move closer to one another. Um, obviously, we got to make sure that, you know, the information that's being spread is like accurate and, you know, that that's like a whole, whole separate issue. Um, but I do love the fact that social media allows people to to be connected. Like I just moved over from Europe to, to or back to the States and um, I have friends and family all over the place. So um, being able to stay in touch with them is 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 just fantastic. Um, I love it when people, you know, went to high school with like reach out to me and I haven't talked to them in, in years. Right. Um, so that's, that I definitely really, really love about, about social media specifically. Um, 
what skills have you acquired that would help you communicate a client's message? Ooh, um, I think being an active listener is really important in that sense, you know, trying to really understand where the client is coming from and meeting them where they are, which is not always easy, um, especially when you feel like that they're they're not always like following best practices, for example, and you feel like, hey, like I really want to educate them. Um, but then it's also like, okay, like how can you do that in like an empathetic, like compassionate way and in a way that adds value to them, right? Like obviously I'm an expert in my niche um, for, for, for the platform that I work for, but I cannot make the assumption that, you know, my clients know just as much about that as I do, right? Then like obviously they could do my job. Um, so yeah, definitely like compassion, empathy, uh, active listening, uh, a little bit of persuasion as well. Uh, obviously, you know, like communication skills, presenting skills, that's that's all really important. And something that is also specifically important to my role is data storytelling. So like there's so many like different reports and insights I can pull um, for, for my clients that um, I can del then turn into a narrative that informs the client um, or ideally informs the client on how to, you know, better optimize their, their app campaigns uh, moving forward and how to better reach their desired target audiences. Great. Lastly, is there anything else you'd like to add on about your journey in this field or just any advice for early in career professionals? Just be kind to yourself. You know, I was really struggling when I graduated from college. I was suffering from post-graduation depression for about two years. And so um, know that you're not alone. Like the, the first couple of years post-college can be really, really lonely. You're so far away from the best friends that you've accustomed to, you know, seeing every single day. Um, they kind of hand you a degree and like an adult seller and be like, here, go out in the world. Good luck without really, you know, telling you how, how to do all of that, how to be a functional adult. So know that you're not alone. Uh, your feelings are valid. Have genuine and vulnerable conversations with the people around, you know, people you trust, your family, your friends, your, your coworkers, and you'll soon realize that you know, no matter where in this world you live, no matter how prestigious your employer is, no matter how much money you earn, you're all in this together. Um, and as someone who's gone through this, I can tell you, now at age 27, like things do get better. Like I'm the happiest I've been in years. I'm the happiest I've been since college. So um, be kind to yourself, give yourself grace, be a little bit patient. Like I promise you there will be a silver lining. That was some great advice. Thank you so much. Well, <laughs> then that pleasure. concludes the interview. Thank you so much for your time, Tamina. It was truly a pleasure talking to you. Likewise, Aditi, and thank you again so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, best of luck with all your endeavors. And to the audience out there, please don't, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, I, I'm sure Aditi will link to, to all my profiles in the show notes. For sure. Once again, I'm Aditi Gunda, and this was Tamina Stoll on The Business Takeaway. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to be up to date with our videos, and please feel free to reach out about anything.